He is a Chicagoan and a good friend of the show. Now, he is a big star on Saturday Night Live, and he has nine, yes, nine sold-out shows at Zany's this weekend in Chicago. Please welcome back Chris Red. What's up, Chris? Yo, what's going on, y'all? Happy 10-year anniversary. Hey, hey, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, now, you've been on SNL, what, four seasons? Yeah, just wrapped the fourth season, man. It uh, feels good to yeah. have a break. Congratulations to you. We're so proud of you. Man, y'all knew me when I was just broke uh, on <laughs> couches wearing my best shirt in that studio. Oh. Yeah, but you know what? We uh, knew big things were ahead for you, so we are excited for you. But four seasons on SNL. Keenan's been there for like 35 years. Uh, how, yeah. how long do you think you want to go on that show? Wait, 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 hold on one second. Ryan, he said something that you, you missed a wide open opportunity for a great follow-up. What, what? He said he knew us when we knew him when he was broke. Yep. The follow-up is, oh. you ain't broke no more? Oh, huh? no. oh, I'm broke as hell. I can't. <laughs> I can't tell you how broke I am. I couldn't even think. Exactly. Because you know what? Once you tell people you not, you not broke anymore, because you know everybody's going to come knocking. You got to stay broke always. Chris, I tell my kids all the time, I ain't got no money. Hey, I stay broke forever. Stay broke, gang. <laughs> There's actually, there's actually a story about that we're going to get to. I'm going to save it. Okay, I'm sorry. I had that. to. I'm like, yeah. he said, I knew y'all when I was broke. I was like, okay, I saw that bird. Oh, I know he's not broke. You're doing just fine. All right, hey, as a comedian, I'm sure that you want to weigh in on this, or maybe you don't, but I'm going to ask you about it anyways. Uh, cancel culture and comedy has been a big hot topic right now. Uh, you know, Chris Rock recently came out, so oh, he yeah. doesn't like cancel culture. Dave Chappelle just doesn't seem like he cares because his stand-up, he says whatever he wants. Um, Seth Rogen has come out and said, hey, there are jokes that I made that were not appropriate and they have not aged well. It's okay to acknowledge that. Say I was, you know, for the time it might have been fine. Mm -hmm. It's not okay now. And just move on with mm -hmm. it. But he's saying he doesn't understand why comedians are making such a big deal about cancel culture. What do you think, Chris? Um, I mean, I think there's always going to be a risk to, to cracking jokes. And, and you know, th there's always a line to walk when you do it. And you have to be confident in, in what you in what you're about to say uh, when you do it, and be able to stand on what you say, and also just make mistakes. And some jokes don't age well. You know, uh, I made a joke um, before the pandemic hit. You know, right when coronavirus was still just on a on a cruise ship, and it wasn't like a whole pandemic. I made a joke on SNL on on the update, and I said uh, black people can't get the coronavirus. That joke did not age well at all. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that's something I know. You know, and it's it's so it's just like. Without there, there, there can be no redemption without people messing up. It's, it's taking the chances on these jokes is why we do what we do in the first place. So I get the frustration from some from some of them guys, but it's like it's always been there. Like they, an obstacle's always been a, a part of this job. So I think it's just it's just coming in the form in the name of cancel culture. And but, but I. I, th I think that that's what Chris Rock was speaking to, is that basically he was saying, we don't need cancel culture. Cancel culture shouldn't exist because as a comedian, we know when we're can Like, we know immediately on stage or performing or whatever, you know when you failed. You know when something's bombed. We get cancellations internally because we know when it's not working. So I think this whole idea of people taking it upon themselves to decide to cancel a comedian because they feel like the comedian has messed up. If the comedian's taking accountability or no if nobody's laughing in the room that it's not working then that's a sort that's a form of cancel culture like you don't need the double right and, and right. times do change if you look at old stand-ups of Eddie Murphy who I think is the greatest stand-up comedian ever I, I put him number one on the list he says like I couldn't do the jokes I did in delirious those some of those jokes are not appropriate but to go back and to judge people based on that is wrong and I think that's what we continue to do I mean I mean now if you what we work for Disney if you go on Disney Plus there are animated cartoons that have warning signs saying that yeah. you know it's it's dated material or whatever it's not appropriate for today's time things change the thing is do are do, should comedians have a safe space on that stage to say what they want because it's uh -huh. art and it's their private show a hundred percent. Like when 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 we're working on 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 jokes and we're working on in, in a space, we got we got to have that space in order to create that joke so that you understand what the end product is. You know what I mean? You can't judge a cake off the batter, man. Like you got to like wait for it to be a cake. You, you know what I mean? Otherwise, it's like yeah. If you're offended by batter, then you're gonna walk in at the beginning of me making a cake and be like, oh, that that offends me, fam. Like, but like you you, you just have to. I mean, look, man. People gonna make mistakes. And to negate people's growth in, in the art 
it, it's just to be like, yo, you cancel and just forget about it. But like the the, the growth is that, that that's what makes all these people amazing. Richard Pryor, everybody who grew from the things and the mistakes that they made and was able to turn it into art. It's like you need that. Um, and, and also, cancel culture is just like very. Uh, it's a very trendy thing right now. Because like Mel Gibson's been canceled like a thousand times, but he's still making bad movies and being mad funded for him too. Like, so like, what is it? What are we actually doing? We're just funneling them to a new crowd of people. Like, what what is the end goal of it? Like, that's kind of my question to cancel culture. Uh, but I, I just keep doing what I do. You know what I mean? And, yeah. I, and I think I think that people like the the real was overcome that all of that. And um, yeah, I think it's a popular thing in, in the void of Twitter and everything else that's going on right now. Yeah, it's just so tricky because it's subjective, right? It's like some people will say, hey, that's hilarious, and other people say, well, I'm offended by that. And like more and more, we're just offended by everything in society.